welcome, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We love you guys. Amen. We want to welcome you all tonight to this live broadcast, Sunday Night Miracle Service. Amen. We are always looking forward to being with you guys. It's a great honor. It's a pleasure to serve God's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Welcome, saints. Ain't God good? Are you believing God tonight? Are you expecting God to do something supernatural in your life on tonight? I'll tell you what, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. We serve a good God. Come on, let's give our God some praise. Let's just give Him praise on tonight. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Ain't he a good God? Isn't he awesome on tonight? Don't you just love Jesus with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, your bodies, and your strength? There is nothing better than being in love with Jesus. Are you hearing me? He is an awesome God. I said he is an awesome, awesome, awesome God. You know what he says in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11? He says, I know the plans that I have for you to prosper you and to give you an expected end. God's not out to get you. He's out to keep on loving you. He's out to keep on blowing your mind. God bless you, my sister, Helen down there in Maryland. <laughs> God bless all of you wonderful people on tonight. Carlos and Stephanie, I'm sure you're here. Amen. We love you guys. Ain't God good? Come on, let's just put our hands together. Let's put our hands together and give God praise. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, I want to say this. There's a man watching me tonight. You are stuck on the bottle, brother. That alcohol is just tearing your family in shreds, tearing up your finances, tearing up your marriage. But I believe if you hang tight tonight, I believe you're going to be set free by the power of the living God. All, as far as the natural goes, all hope is lost for you, but not with Jesus, brother. All hope is not lost. No bottle, no alcohol, no addiction. I say no addiction is stronger than the power of the living God. I said no addiction is stronger than the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody help me give him a praise tonight. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, you shall receive power. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes on you. Glory to God. So if you have no place else to turn, that addiction has a stronghold on your life. It's ripping you to pieces. I want to say to you tonight, you are in the right place at the right time because God's about to deliver you. God's about to set you free. God's about to break the demonic chains off of your life. You'll never touch that alcohol again after tonight. You'll never put another needle in your arm after tonight. That demon of suicide will never have control over your life. After tonight, this is your night for a miracle. This is your night for a breakthrough. This is your night where the blood of Jesus Christ is about to set you free from every sin 
You may be an adulterer. You may be a murderer. You may be a thief. You may be a liar. You may be a prostitute. I feel the Holy Ghost. You in the right place at the right time. And I dare say to you under this anointing, all hope is not lost. It's not too late for God to turn your marriage around. I said it's not too late. Hey, somebody just help me give God a praise tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Somebody, somebody is about to come out of that prison of despair, that prison of depression, that prison of pain, that prison of cancer, that prison of sickness. You're about to come out in the name of Jesus. I said you're about to come out of it. That financial struggle that seems like it's about to drown you. I said you're about to come out of it in the name of Jesus. You're in the right place at the right time on tonight. I say you're at the right place at the right time. Somebody put your hands together and help me give our God an absolute praise because he is awesome. Somebody help me praise him. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I join my faith with everyone that's watching this broadcast tonight. Minister to them, oh God. Strengthen them. I pray that you would bring answers to their problems on tonight. Solve their problems, I pray. Father, you said in your word, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it is by my spirit. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by the Holy Ghost. It's by the Holy Ghost. It's by the power of the living God that he's about to set you free on tonight. Glory to God. We love you guys. Bless your people on tonight. Listen, friend, that prayer that you've been struggling with, it seems like you haven't been getting an answer. I believe you're about to get an answer tonight. I believe God's about to bring clarity into your life on tonight. God's about to bring clarity into your life. In the name of Jesus. Now listen, before we go further into this broadcast, let me know where you're watching us from. Agnes from Klang, Malaysia. I'll be reading your testimony in just a few moments. We got a powerful testimony. Sajid is on here as well. Sajid is from Canada, originally from India, Punjab, India, but she lives in Canada with a wonderful family. I'll be sharing her testimony as well. Powerful testimonies. Melbourne, Australia. Welcome, Priya. Trinidad. Amen. Sigjeet from Brampton, Canada. Can't wait to share your testimony. From Waterbury, Connecticut. From Alabama. Let me know where you're from. Leeds, UK. Deborah in the house. New Mexico. Colorado Springs, Colorado. New York. Jamaica. Lawrenceville, Georgia. St. Paul, Minnesota. From Trinidad. Larissa from India. Nola from Manhattan. Queens, New York in the house. Jamaica from someone else from Holland, from Canada. El Paso, Texas. My Texans in the house tonight. New York City. Someone else. Latrice from Jamaica. Come on, let me know where you're from. Mumbai, India is in the house. New Orleans. <laughs> That's where my lovely wife is from. Lewis from Maryland. God bless you. Barbados in the house on tonight. Adajok from Germany. Tamil Nadu, India, Tamulian friends in the house, Boca Raton, Florida, Buffalo, New York, Annie all the way from the Bahamas, my wonderful country, that's where I'm from, the Bahamas, a little town called High Rock, Grand Bahama, Bahamas, South and on the sea, Maryland, <laughs> that only could be Helen, 
Ruth from India, Avril, Jamaica, Hampstead, New York, Covington, Georgia. Come on, New Jersey in the house, Delaware. Keith from Tampa, amen. <laughs> India again. <laughs> you know we love you guys, right? You know we love you, there's nothing you can do about it. India again, the UK. Athea from India, all right. Paul Parker, praise the Lord, from New Jersey. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, we love you guys out there in Pennsylvania. I, I feel so blessed, well praise God. <laughs> Jacksonville, Florida. We used to live in Jacksonville. Praise God. Come on, let's put our heads together tonight and welcome everybody to this live broadcast. Las Vegas, Nevada. Massachusetts. Come on, let's welcome everybody to this live broadcast where God is still confirming the word with signs, wonders, and notable miracles. Grenada in the house, my friends in the Caribbean. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Trinidad and Tobago. Come on, let me know where you're from. I want to shout out to you, Barbados. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God. Come on, let's put our hands together and just welcome everybody. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody, just give him praise. Just give him praise. For you are great. For you are great. Because so great. There is no one. There is no one else like you. My God, my God. There is no one else like you. For you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one. There is no one else like you. For you, for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift your holy name, yes, you deserve the glory, you deserve the honor as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift your holy name for you are great come on sing with me you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great Shh. listen listen I gotta say this there's someone watching this broadcast. Now listen, when this happens, the Holy Ghost show me stuff sometimes that's going on in people's lives. It's to bring glory to the name of Jesus. It's not to lift up some man. Amen. But listen, there is someone tonight, you've just been healed, right on the bottom right side of your back. You had pains that would shoot from like the center of your back and it would loop around to the right side, almost around by the front of your stomach. But you are being healed. You, listen, you have already been healed. If you were to check yourself, there's no pain there. You've been having serious problems there. You've been seeing the doctor for this. That's on the bottom right side of your back. Those pains would shoot all the way around. Those pains would shoot all the way around to your stomach. But the pain is gone. God just healed you. That's in your lower back area, coming around your right side. Sharp pains. You just received a miracle. I want you to accept your healing. Just say, Lord, I thank you. I receive my miracle right now. There's someone at the bottom right side of your back. Shh. Listen, friend, I want you to check yourself. There's no more pain there. That's the bottom right side of your back. And the pain would shoot all the way around to the front of your stomach. There's no more pain there. That pain have caused you problems for 
a very long time. Now, I'm going to preach the word tonight. I got a message tonight. But I'm going to take my time to get there, amen. I got to move with the Holy Spirit. Don't, don't put no worry about your prayer request right now. I just want you to pay attention to the broadcast. Listen to the word of God. I believe God will speak to you. But listen, that pain, you'll completely heal. There's no more pain there, friend. And whenever you go back to the doctor, they will confirm that there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong there. That problem is going to be confirmed, that there's, there's no problem there. That whatever they found before, whenever you go back and get the test on the MRIs, the CAT scans, listen, they will verify that there's nothing there anymore. Something was there. Something was wrong. But it's not, It's the problem is gone. The problem is completely gone. And, and listen, someone else, you've just been healed in your left elbow. I don't know if, I don't know what what type of damage it is. I don't know what type of accident that happened that, that caused your left elbow to be damaged. But if you begin to if you begin to exercise your left hand by bending it and straightening it out, you'll notice that you've been completely healed by the power of God. You notice you're completely healed by the power of God. And someone else, tonsillitis, someone been having severe, it's been severe swelling now. You've been having problems swallowing. And look, in that second, you, don't, you didn't even realize it, but I believe it was about 10 minutes ago, you've been completely healed. Just check yourself, and go drink some water, some milk, go drink something that would have caused you severe pain before. The pain is gone. There's no more pain there. None. Now look, I believe God's going to heal a whole lot of people on tonight. I believe God's going to heal a lot of people on tonight. But I'm about to read some testimonies to you. And I want you to listen to these real good. Because it's going to bless you. Because if you need a miracle from God, I believe God's going to do that in your life. Are you hearing me? I believe God's going to do that. Listen, the Holy Spirit's giving me a word here. Leukemia. Shh. Listen, leukemia, cancer, just been healed in somebody's body. Leukemia, cancer, just been healed. That's a woman you're watching this broadcast. I believe they'd already start the radiation treatment on you. But listen, the pain that that problem was causing in your body, the pain is completely gone. Leukemia cancer have just been healed. When you go back to your doctor, they're going to verify that something has happened in your body that's beyond their medical training. There's no explanation for it. But we know what happened. It's the power of God. It's the power. And the Holy Ghost has shown this to me real strong. Leukemia cancer. Leukemia. I'm also seeing this, cancer of the bone, cancer of the bone, cancer of the bone. It's, it has already spread all in your lymph nodes and everything like that. But listen, the power, a tremendous heat, the, the, heal, the Holy Ghost is here. Just lift your hands and receive your healing. Don't wait for me to call it out. I just got to move with the Holy Ghost. Don't wait for me to call your problem. Just lay your hands on that part of your body where you know you need a miracle from God. Just call your sickness or your disease out right now. But listen, that cancer had already spread throughout your body. I'm talking to someone who who, who are in their final stages of cancer. All every Listen, people, every trace of the pain is gone from out of your body. Every trace of it. It's about 20 minutes ago. Every trace of pain is completely gone from out of your body. Every trace of pain. Check yourself. Full mobility, full mobility is coming into your body. Full mobility is coming into your body. I mean, cancer in the bones. Full mobility. You, you, you can move. You, you, you gain in strength even, even as I speak. Some of you feel a tremendous heat. Some of you feel 
a tremendous heat. Some of you feel a warmth. Some of you feel like it's a glow. Some of you feel electricity. Some of you feel a cool breeze blowing on your body. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. Cancer in the throat. Cancer in the throat. Just been healed. Cancer in the throat. Cancer in the throat. Receive it, saints. But if that's you I'm talking to, the Holy Ghost talking to you, I don't know you, but God knows you. Put your hands on your throat right now. Cancer of the throat. Cancer of the throat. Cancer of the throat being healed. The Holy Ghost showing this to me. Cancer of the stomach. Cancer of the stomach. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Glaucoma in the left eye. Glaucoma in the left eye. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glaucoma. Glaucoma in the left eye. Started to completely take your vision away. Your vision is being restored right now. Check your eyes. Put your hands over your good eye. Put your hands over your right eye. Check your left eye out. And there's someone else on you. You're being healed in both your eyes. The power of God is here. The power of God. And you know... The Holy Spirit showing this to me. Someone had fractured or broken the right leg. I see you kind of, I see you with a with a serious limp and you're on crutches as well. There's a brace on that right leg. I want you to check that leg because the power of God just shot through your right leg. The power of God shot through your right leg and all the pain is gone. Whatever fracture that was there, it's not there anymore. It's gone. It's gone. And the Holy Ghost is showing this to me. Someone, arthritis in the hips, arthritis in the hip socket. I rebuke that arthritis in the name of Jesus. Give me my tour. I rebuke that arthritis in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. Someone lift your hands to heaven and receive your healing. Just lift your hands to heaven. The power of God is here. Some more of you are going to be healed before this broadcast is over. Some more of you are about to be healed before this broadcast is over. Some more of you are about to be healed. Well, it's the Holy Spirit that's working through our lives. We don't take any credit. It's the Lord Jesus. We don't think we we don't we really don't think we're great. We think it's Jesus in us that's great. We know gonna touch his glory, amen. But we love you guys. But listen, there's many people, many people. Listen, the power of God is on your body. You don't need me to call your situation out. The minute the Holy Spirit starts working and I start calling out people's problems by the Spirit of God, miracles are beginning to happen everywhere. Miracles are beginning to happen. Some, Listen, some of you feel a tremendous heat on your body. Just receive your miracle, right? Listen, some of you are going, some of your minds are going to be blown when you go back to the doctor. Some of you are going to be blown when you wake up. Your mind's going to be blown when you wake up tomorrow morning. That tumor is going to be gone. That sickness is going to be gone. That diabetes, that high blood pressure, that cancer. My God. Listen, there's a woman on here. You and your husband have been praying and believing God for you to get pregnant for a long time. It just seemed like nothing would happen. But I just saw the Holy Spirit open up your womb. Your womb is about to be fruitful from this day forward. Nine months from this very day, you'll be holding your baby in your hands in the name of Jesus. I said nine months from today. Now, I'm, I'm talking to married people. I'm not talking to folk that's shocking up. Hello? I'm talking to married people. Amen? I'm talking to married folks. Amen? We got to do this right. 
Are you hearing me? Your womb is open. It's open. Nine months from now, I want to see a picture of that baby. In the name, somebody help me give him praise. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Listen. Someone watching this broadcast, you you are almost you are almost totally paralyzed on your right side. You suffered from a major stroke, and it's happened in your body. The Holy Spirit showed me at least four times. You had a major stroke in your right, the right side of your body. The right side of your body is almost completely paralyzed. But in that moment, the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the healing power of the Holy Ghost, have shot through your body, and you are receiving a miracle in your right side. Begin to move your right hands and your right legs. Begin to move your right hands and your right legs. Begin to exercise your right hands and your right legs. Begin to get up and walk. Man, twist. Do something you could not do before. Don't just look at me. Do something you couldn't do before. I'm talking to everybody that's watching this broadcast who have been suffering from some type of pain in your body. Do what you could not do before. Do it when it costs you pain because the healing power of the Holy Ghost is here. The power of the Holy Ghost is here and miracles are happening right now. Miracles are happening right now. Miracles, miracles, miracles. You are great. Miracles are happening right now. Many people are receiving a miracle. Many people are receiving miracles in their body. Sean, to put the email up there. Lorraine, please email us your testimony. Shh. Listen, many miracles are happening. Check your body, folks. Check, listen, check your body and expect your body to be healed because the power of God is here. The power of God is here to work miracles. The power of God is here to work miracles. Some, many people are being healed right now. Many people are being healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your miracle of healing. Receive it. Put your hands on that part of your body. Put your hands on that part of your body for you who have not been healed yet. But many of you have been healed. Many of you have received a miracle. The arthritis is gone. The pain is gone. The cancer is gone. The blindness from the... The blindness is gone. The deafness is gone. The swelling in your throat is gone. The tumor in your body is gone. The paralysis is gone. In the name of Jesus, the migraine headache is gone. Check your body, saints. Don't just look at me. Check yourself and expect a miracle to have happened in your body because the power of the Holy Ghost is here. Yeah, you are great. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one for you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. And the honor. 
as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. As we lift our hands in worship, as we lift your holy name for you, for you are great. Come on, sing with me, saints. You do miracles so great. There is no one, there is no one else like you. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. Slow it down. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Be still. And know that I am God. Lift your hands to heaven. Be still. And know that I unbelief sitting out there looking at me. Look, check your body. You'll find out that many of you have been healed by the power of God. Be still and know that I am. I got to read some testimonies here. First testimony we have is from one of our precious partners, Sajit, down there in Canada, from Brampton, Canada. Listen to Sajit's testimony. I interviewed her this week. She's a nurse, but she received a miracle of healing in her body. Amen. Listen to this. Sajit said, I was suffering from something like a hemorrhoid problem because I had very itchy skin. Listen. She says, I, she said, I couldn't sit. It would have caused a tremendous pain. I couldn't even walk. It was so uncomfortable. I tried four different doctors and none of them could solve the problem. At first, one of the doctors said, it's, it's, at first, at first, one of the doctors said, it's not hemorrhoids. It's just itchy skin. Another one said, no, it's hemorrhoids. Even my family doctor said it's not hemorrhoids. They didn't know what was going on. They said, they said they gave me all the medications they possibly could and that there was nothing more that they can do. Have anyone ever heard those words? I'm not against doctors, I'm for doctors. Thank God for doctors. They are a blessing to the body of Christ, amen? Thank God for hospital, hospitals and doctors and medical science amen but they are limited there are some problems they just cannot solve and you should take advantage of every please take advantage of, of whatever you can get from a doctor if they can help you praise be to God but there are some things that's beyond their reach listen to this listen to what Sajid said not only did I suffer from that problem but my skin felt itchy under my elbows and I had a rash on my neck area. Both were bothering me a lot. I had this problem for about 20 years. It was like eczema, but the doctor said it was an eczema. If it were eczema or something else, it would have stayed on the body for a while. It wasn't like that. 
a bad, don't try to call me in the middle of this broadcast. We're not answering our phones. It's not going to happen. Amen. We're in the middle of our broadcast. Listen to this. They said, she said a bad rash would appear for two days and then disappear. And then it would come back again. Then they said it was just a heat rash. They didn't know what was going on. That night, when I came from the doctor's office, there was a miracle service on YouTube. I got the notification that Pastor Sean was on live. I just turned that on and I started praying with the pastor. The next day when I woke up, it was all gone. Praise God. It has been four or five weeks since my healing and I'm rash free. I have no rash, no pain, no itchiness, and nothing on my body. Thank God. I'm all good now. Before, I couldn't even sit. It was so uncomfortable. And now, it is suddenly gone. Now, I'm 100% healed. The rash is completely gone. If God can heal me, then definitely he can heal other people too. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, help me give him a praise. Miracle working God. Shauna, put that AC on 73. Come on, let's give God a praise for that wonderful miracle that Sajid from Canada received. God healed her body. She is completely healed. <coughs> Something that she had struggled with for 20 years. The doctors couldn't solve it. Medication couldn't solve it because there are some things that, that's just beyond their reach. But there's nothing beyond the reach of Dr. Jesus. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He have not changed. And if you are believing God for a miracle of healing in your body on tonight, you are in the right place at the right time where God is still confirming the gospel with signs, wonders, and miracles following. Because Jesus is alive. Somebody help me praise him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. He said in Exodus, he said in Exodus 15, 26, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Psalms 103, verse 3, he says he forgives all of the, our sins and he heals all of our diseases. Amen. Now we have a we have a second powerful testimony on tonight that I want to share with you. This is the this is the last testimony for tonight. There are other testimonies that I'll be reading on next week. God's confirming his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And listen, friends, if you are watching this live broadcast, or if you're watching this rebroadcast, and you receive a miracle of healing in your body and you did not have a chance to email it to us, put that email up there, Shauna. I want you to email your testimony to us, info at seanpinder.net, and make sure put your telephone number in that email because we want to give you a call and interview you and share the testimony of what God has done in your life. Amen? Now listen, this is a powerful testimony from Agnes in Klang, Malaysia. God did a miracle turnaround in her family, in her marriage, and in her relationship with her husband and kids, her and her husband. I mean, God just did a miraculous turnaround in this family. And also, she also received a miracle of healing, a physical healing in her body. But thank God he's still in the saving, healing, and delivering business of turning people's marriages around. And many of you ladies have been writing into me, you know, you running into trouble with your husbands, you believe in God for a turnaround in your marriage. I want you to listen to Agnes' testimony in her 
own words. Listen, for any woman on this broadcast tonight, for anyone who are having a terrible marital problems, and your marriage is at the point of divorce, at the point of separation, you guys are not communicating or speaking between one another. Agnes' testimony, Agnes is all the way from Klang, Malaysia. Let her testimony be a witness to you that nothing is impossible with God. Are you hearing me tonight? Listen. Listen to Agnes' testimony. Shalom, Reverend Sean and Reverend Amy Pinder. It was God's greatest gift that I came across your YouTube broadcast during my lowest moment of my life. Listen to this. My family was falling apart. There were constant verbal fights between my husband and our 17 year old son. They could not be in the same room without our son bursting into a temperamental outburst and hurting, hurting and abusive remarks. Many of you are dealing with this problem. I would dread when it was time for my husband to return home from work. It was like sitting on a time bomb, just waiting for an explosion. The same was starting to happen with my daughter. I want you to listen to this. My husband and our children were once very close and loving, and I just could not understand where this anger was coming from, both-sided. We could not even go out as a family. I'm going to take my time with this because I want, listen, I want this testimony to build your faith that God can do it for you as well. She said, we could not even go out as a family for they will all start quarreling in the car. I was caught between my husband and my kids. My children accused me of always being silent and submissive towards my husband and his family. I preferred ignorance to maintain peace. My husband is non-Christian. Where else? My husband is a non-Christian. Where else? I am strong in my faith and my relationship with the Lord Jesus. We support each other in our religious life. And all this was fine with us, although his family was always dead against me and our children for not being brought up, for not being brought up in their faith. This caused a lot of issues on the way our children were treated compared to other grandchildren. Favoritism caused a lot of resentment on the children and I always told them to ignore my in-laws stupidity as their father's happiness was their priority. Keep listening folks. We visit them once a week just for my husband's sake which the children dreaded but were forced by, by the father. He loved his mom and sibling and would always favor them. When my son turned 16, he refused to comply anymore and started to rebel against the father for allowing his family who treat us differently. Our daughter also joined her brother, although she would still follow us when we insisted. Keep listening. This started to take a toll on our marriage. I guess it would anyone's marriage. My husband felt that I had poisoned the children against his family and my in-laws used this situation to their advantage. They would sympathize and poison his mind against us. Many ladies are dealing with this problem. We have a lot of emails coming in about this exact same problem, but I want you to keep on listening. My family was breaking up all around me and I was helpless. I could not sleep and could not think straight. I used to cry out to the Lord. Why was this happening to me? I had not, I had no one to turn to. And I thought of committing suicide and throwing in the towel and walk out and just disappear. Through all this, I felt God's strength, but it was just not enough as my situation was becoming worse and I felt that God had more important things to attend to other than my issues. A lot of you on here tonight feel that way. This, 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 this couldn't be a more timely letter to read tonight. Listen to what Agnes said. In my desperation, in, she said, in my desperation, 
and search on the web. I came across your postings on YouTube. She said, I subscribed after listening to one session. I felt the love of God pouring out from the scriptures you were sharing. Listen to this. God had time for everyone. I don't have to wait for my turn for his mercies. Listen to what Agnes wrote. She said, the following day was Thursday. It was Thursday in Malaysia, but it was Wednesday here in Dallas, Texas. The following day was Thursday. And when you started sharing about the Holy Spirit asking you to pray on that day, you said that someone was about to throw in the towel in their marriage and that God was listening and help was on hand. Help was on the way. I started weeping and calmness descended on me. I felt all my burdens were lifted out of me as I surrendered my family and myself to God. I felt relieved and my burden lifted after 10 months of mental torture. Listen to this. I no longer worried, although things were still the same. I just continued praying and listening to your broadcasts and any other prayer that you had on the internet. Listen to this. Agnes said, as days passed, I found changes in my husband and my son. Praise God. I had a fear for my husband, although he was not physically abusive. His temper puts fear in me. I felt God's prompting for days and finally picked up the courage to approach him. To my surprise, there was no anger or hatred in his voice. He seemed changed. There is calmness and happiness in him today. Listen to this. He is much more understanding towards the children and spend, spends time talking to them compared to his enormity each time he came home after work in the past. There is so much love and understanding in his voice and in his eyes. My God, this makes you want to shout, isn't it? Watch this. My son, on the other hand, has been secluding himself in his room, refused to join the family for any function. He used to be embarrassed going out with us and refuse all contact with our relatives on both sides. Listen to this. Today, he spends time with the family and even joined us for a movie. He invited himself to join us visiting our relatives. Everyone was surprised and delighted seeing him after more than one year. Listen to this good. Today, both the father and the son are friends. So is the relationship between my daughter and son and husband. Praise the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Listen to this. All this has been made possible by God in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. All in 30 days. Praise, glory, and thanks to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Thank you, Reverend Sean, for sharing the word of God in your prayers. For all those who join in on your broadcast, you have helped us understand the power of prayer, faith, and surrender to God's Holy Spirit. Come out and put your hands together and help me shout and rejoice for what God has done in Agnes' family in a marriage, in a son's life, in her daughter's life, and in her husband's life. We serve a good God. Somebody help me praise Him. Yeah! My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. My God.
God, my God. My God. Break every chain. My God, my God. Come on. Yeah, yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in that name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in that name. There is power in the name. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain to break every chain. I don't care what your marriage is going through. I don't care what the situation is in your home. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power. Come on, sing it with me. There's power in that name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in that name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in that name to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. about to break off somebody's marriage, the chain of sickness, the chain of disease, the chain of poverty, the chain of marital problems, shall break, somebody shall break, yeah, yeah, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. See, Agnes had to make a decision, you see. She made the right decision. She made the right decision. She made the right decision to surrender it all to Jesus. She made the right decision. And I will share her testimony of healing. I will share, she got a very powerful miracle in her back, but I'm going to share it right after keep keep playing i'm gonna share it right after i share the word of god listen listen here saints many of many of you on this broadcast tonight many of you feel as if there is a blockage between your breakthrough and yourself some of you feel as though you're praying and it seems like your prayers is not getting anywhere. I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to about you. I want to talk to you about something very important. I want to take my time with this. Because I believe, I believe this is one of the most, I believe this is one of the greatest hindrances to us receiving answers to our prayer and also to us receiving a miracle of healing in our bodies many of you are praying and it seems like something's wrong listen friends listen this this is what the holy ghost led me to talk about tonight i want to talk about the stumbling block 
of unforgiveness and bitterness. I want you to hear me good. We, we're not here to condemn you. We're here to help you, friend. You know, God stirred my heart. We had our partners prayer meeting on Tuesday. And the Holy Ghost stirred my heart real strong about this. And even later on into this week, as I was spending time with God in prayer, the Holy Ghost said, Son, many of your YouTube subscribers, many of them, a lot of them, their prayers are being hindered because of unforgiveness and bitterness. I want to go into the Word of God on this subject tonight. Don't tune me out. I want you to listen closely because whatever it is, this unforgiveness that you've been struggling with, this chain of unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment and animosity because of the wrong that was done to you, you just, seems, you just seem like you can't even get free from it. You are in a prison of bitterness and unforgiveness and this thing is hindering your prayer. This is hindering your financial breakthrough. This is hindering a breakthrough in your marriage. This is hindering you on all sides. Are you hearing me, friends? But tonight, the Holy Ghost want me to tell you, after I'm done sharing the Word of God, the Holy Ghost is going to wash that out of you. The blood of Jesus Christ is going to break the shackle from off of you. That unforgiving spirit you're about to be delivered from that. The devil been having a heyday in your life. But his heyday is about to come to a close. That season where this thing has been hindering your prayer from being answered. Give me my music now. No drums. This thing has been hindering you for a long time. You in a prison, you just, every time you see that person, that resentment, that anger, that animosity, that rage, it just boils over. And that thing has come between you and God. And it's come between you and receiving answers to your prayer. But God told me to tell you, you are going to be set free from unforgiveness tonight. I said, you are going to be set free from unforgiveness tonight. Are you listening to me? I believe marriages are going to be reconciled. But let me preach the word of God first. That unforgiveness, that bitterness, you're going to be set free from that thing tonight. You see, the Bible says, in 1 John, let me read this to you. You just gonna have to bear with me now. I'm flowing with the Holy Ghost, amen? You're gonna have to just bear with me, amen? Just, just hang with me because the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you. Are you hearing me? I said the Holy Ghost wants to minister to you from the Word of God. And, and if you're expecting a preacher who's just going to compromise and tell you what you want to hear, you're in the wrong place. We got to get rid of the sin. We got to get rid of those things that grieves the Holy Ghost. We got to get rid of those things that grieves God. That's against the word of God. He loves us, you see. It's because of his love. The Bible says, who he loves, he corrects, you see. If God loves you, he's going to confront you when you got sin in your life or you have something wrong in your life or something that's coming between you and your relationship with God. Look, we may be servants of God, but you know the Holy Ghost convict us. The Holy Ghost straightens us out. No preacher is beyond the conviction of the Holy Ghost. No preacher have it all together. We are walking with God one day at a time and as we walk with God he have to point things out in our lives that's wrong and when he pointed out we have to fix it but it's because of his love that he confronts us and show us when we are in error because he wants us to be blessed you see the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 the Bible says if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and obey his voice and his commands 
then these blessings will come on you and overtake you. But before the blessings come on us and overtake us, we have to hearken, we have to obey, we have to listen diligently to the voice of God and obey scripture. You see, Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But when you act on the truth, when you act on the word of God that the Holy Ghost is bringing to your attention when he's revealing something to you that you need to fix, when you act on that truth, you'll be set free and your prayers will not be hindered. The breakthrough will come on you and overtake your life. Are you hearing me, friend? Now, I, I know this message might not be for everybody, but it's for a whole lot of people, including myself, that's on this broadcast on tonight. The sin of unforgiveness. It's a roadblock. It's a hindrance to your prayer being answered. But I want to pray with you before I jump into this word now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we go into the word of God, you said we must speak the truth in love. As we speak the truth in love and with compassion, with integrity and with conviction, we pray that the Holy Ghost would pour the love of God on your people. Bring conviction in their hearts if this is the thing that have come between you and them. If this is the thing that's hindering their prayer. If this is the thing that's hindering their answer that you want to release. If this is the thing that's hindering their breakthrough. Shine the light on it, God. Bring conviction. Because you are a loving, kind, compassionate, forgiving Savior. Jesus, you say you didn't come to condemn. You came that the, that the world through you, Jesus, might be saved. Get a hold of us tonight. Friends, before I go into this word, if you know someone in your family, or if you know a friend, you know an employee, you know somebody, they're in bondage to unforgiveness. I'm asking you right now, Share this broadcast with your friends. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Share it on Instagram. Just share it with your YouTube friends. Please share it because God's about to do something powerful in somebody's life. I couldn't wait to come. I couldn't wait for this broadcast tonight because God has been stirring my heart all day in prayer that somebody is about to be set free. Their answer is about to be released as soon as they fix this problem tonight. Listen. Listen to what the Bible says. Listen to 1 John chapter 2, verse 11. Let me read this to you. 1 John chapter 2, verse 11 says, But he that hates his brother is in darkness are you listening to me friend the bible says in first john chapter 2 verse 11 but he that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not where he is going because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Are you listening to me on tonight? Friends, that hatred, that unforgiveness. Do you have a black right? You, you, one of you guys have a black right? It's all right. I'll use my green towel. Did you hear what the Bible says? Is, is there a black rag in the room there, Shauna? I, I, I just got to show, I, I want you to get this, man. I want you to get what the Holy Ghost 
I want you to get what the Holy Ghost is saying to you. This, th this, this, this is a serious thing. All right. And I'm going to use my green towel. He said that. No, okay, that's too small. I'll use this. Listen, he, he said that hatred. Let me read it one more time. He that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and knows not where he is going. Look, you got a blindfold on you, friend. That unforgiveness, that hatred, that bitterness, that resentment, that anger, that animosity in your heart have blinded your eyes. There is no spiritual insight. There is no direction in your life. There is no revelation from the word of God. Are you hearing me? There is no revelation from the word of God. When hatred and anger and unforgiveness and bitterness clogs up your spirit man, there is no way your prayer will be heard. There is no way God will give you a breakthrough, a financial turnaround. There is no way peace or restoration will come into your marriage as long as you are full of unforgiveness and bitterness and resentment and hatred and anger. Are you listening to me? This ain't my word. This is the word of God. He said, listen, if you hate your brother, you are in darkness even now I want you to listen to me he said if you hate your brother you in darkness friend you are in darkness there's no light there's no direction in your life there's confusion in your life You are praying, but it's getting you nowhere. But the Holy Spirit in his loving kindness and loving mercy is pointing it out in your life tonight because God wants that, he wants to remove that blockage from out of your life. Let me read that scripture again. He that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because that darkness of hatred and anger and bitterness and unforgiveness have blinded his eyes serious stuff what is unforgiveness unforgiveness is the unwillingness to forgive or pardon somebody for a wrong that they have done to you or for a hurt or a harm, whatever it is, whatever damage they have done that they have caused you. You just refuse it to let them go. What is bitterness? Bitterness is marked by strong resentment or cynicism. Showing hostility and animosity towards someone that have done you wrong. Are you listening to me on tonight? This is serious stuff. We got to deal with this. We got to get rid of this. Let's go into the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 23 through 26. Mark chapter 11 verse 23 through 26. Listen to the word of God. This is Jesus talking. Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the midst of the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, Jesus say you will have whatever you say. But it's conditional, friend. 
Most people quote the scripture without quoting the conditions. And then they wonder why they're doing all this declaring. They're doing all this decreeing. They're doing all this believing. And still, they're not seeing any change in their situation. But let's read on a little further and you will understand why nothing is happening. Even though you declaring and you speaking, you shouting, you shouting, you getting up early in the morning, late at night, and still there is no change. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 24. Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, this is Mark 11 verse 24 now, therefore, I say unto you, what? Things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. But he didn't stop there. He goes on into verse 25. He says, and, and means this is a continuation for verse 23 and verse 24 to be able to come to pass in your life. You have to fulfill verse 25 and verse 26. Verse 25 says, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any. You need a break? You can swap it or take a break. Come on, move fast. Don't, 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 don't hang up. Watch this. Jesus said, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any. I'm taking my time because I want you to hear this word tonight. Jesus say, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. Listen to verse 26. Jesus said, but if you do not forgive Neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. If you expect God to forgive you, friend, you've got to forgive other people. No matter how bad they hurt you, no matter how much pain they cost you, no matter how much harm that they have brought to your family or brought to you physically, Jesus is saying you still got to forgive them. Look at what Jesus said on the cross, man. They were crucifying him. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Gee, think about it. They had whipped him. He was, he was, be he was beaten with a cat and nine tail. This, this leather belt with straps that had nails and hooks on the end, every time they hit him in his back and pull it, it would pull out his raw flesh. Think about this. They took a crown of thorns and pressed it down into his head, going into his brain, and blood was pouring off his face. And yet Jesus hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. First Peter said, Jesus has left us an example. He has left us an example that we should follow in his steps. The Bible says we must forgive other people even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven us. They were stoning Stephen. They were stoning Stephen. In Acts chapter, I believe it was Acts chapter 9, at 7, 8, 9. They were stoning this man. And Stephen says, Father, forgive them. Lay not this sin to their charge. My God, God knows the pain that those people have caused you. God saw the drama that they brought into your family. He's seen the problem that that woman have caused in your marriage. He's seen how your husband was not honest with you, how your wife was not honest with you. He's seen how that boss man treats you like you are nothing, use you for a doormat. He sees the abuse. God knows, he sees, he saw how they lied on you and scandalized your name and call you everything but a child of God. And yet, 
God in his love and in his tender mercy. He's asking you to forgive. He is asking you to let those people go. They are not worth it, friends. They are not worth it. Listen to this. Let me read something to you. This is from the book of Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. I want you to listen to this. This is the parable of the unforgiving servant. But it started with the apostle Peter asking Jesus a question. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 through 35. Listen to what Peter says. Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how often, how often should I forgive someone who sinned against me? Peter said, should I just forgive him seven times? Seven times is a stretch for a whole lot of us. To forgive someone seven times is a stretch. But Jesus blew Peter's mind. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. If they offend you 490 times in a day, forgive them. In other words, Jesus said, I want you, I want you to develop an attitude of walking in forgiveness. Walk in an attitude 70 times seven. My God. 490 times a day, if they offend me, I'm supposed to forgive them? Absolutely yes. And then to drive the point home, I want you to listen. And then to drive the point home, listen to what Jesus said to Peter. Jesus said, therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with his servants who had borrowed money from him. Listen to verse 24. Let me get some water. I know tonight is intense. Amen. But we need messages like this to get us back on track, to get us back right with God so we can grow in God, so we can draw closer to God, so that thing that has come between us and God can be removed out of our life, so that hindrance to our prayer, that thing that has given the enemy the upper hand in our lives and over our finances, so that thing can be removed. Are you listening to me? Listen to this. So Jesus said in the process of time, one of his debtors was brought to him who owed him millions of dollars. I'm using the New Living Translation to bring it more into today's language. We don't, you know, I know we don't say talents. We, we, we use money, dollars. Some, some people say pesos, francs. Listen, one, he noticed one of his debtors had owed him several million dollars. He couldn't pay. So his master ordered, this is what they did back in this day and time. So his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man, listen, but the man fell down before his master and begged him and said, please, be patient with me. And I promise I'll pay it all back. Just, just please give me another chance. Don't throw me in jail. Don't sell me and my family off. Don't make me to become one of your slaves. That's just unbearable to me. He cried out for mercy. Verse 27 said, Then his master, verse 27, Then his master was filled with pity and compassion and released him and forgave him the debt that he could not pay. He couldn't pay it. The debt was too much for him, but he cried and he begged for mercy. He said, Master, please forgive me. Give me another chance. And his master forgave him. His master forgave him. 
Listen to verse 28. Verse 28 said, But when this same man, when he left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him only a few thousand dollars. This same guy who was just forgiven by the king of several million dollars went out from the presence of, of the king <coughs> excuse me and found a fellow servant who owed him only a few measly thousand dollars and he grabbed the man by his throat and demanded instant payment he grabbed the guy by his throat wait a minute you mean the same man who was just forgiven several million dollars? This man who owed this king several million dollars? This man who had just received mercy? This man who had just experienced the forgiveness of God? This man who had just experienced God's kindness, God's love, and God's compassion? He went out and found somebody? that owed him only a thousand, only a few thousand dollars, and he grabbed this man by his throat and demanded instant payment? Listen to what happened in verse 29. This man fell down at this guy at his feet and begged him for a little more time. Be patient with me and I'll pay it back, he pleaded. This guy was saying the exact same words that he had just finished saying to the king. I mean, he was using the exact same words that this man who had received forgiveness had said to the king. Someone's about to be healing now, the bottom left side of your stomach. I don't know if it's a kidney problem or some bladder problem there in the bottom left side of your stomach, but someone is receiving a healing right this second. And the bottom left side of your stomach. It's something I believe you've seen the doctor for, on medication for. You are having serious complications there. But there's a miracle of healing coming into the left bottom side of your stomach right this second. Just lay your hands there and say, Lord, I accept my healing. Now watch this. So this guy fell down on this man's feet who had received forgiveness from the king. And he begged him he said, man, have mercy on me. Just give me more time. I promise I'm going to pay it all. But this fellow would not wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. He was unmerciful, man. He just received forgiveness from the king. And now there's someone else asking him for forgiveness. He had several million dollars forgiven him. And he don't want to forgive this man who owe him only a few thousand dollars. He was unmerciful. He had no compassion. He had zero tolerance and zero forgiveness. Is this making sense to you tonight? Is the Holy Ghost painting a picture to you tonight? Listen to the rest of the story. Verse 31 says, When some of the other servants of the king saw this, they were very upset. Of course they were upset because they were saying, Wait a minute, didn't the king just forgive this guy several million dollars? And he can't forgive this man who only owed him a few thousand? They went to the king and told the king everything that had happened. And of course, the king got very upset because that means this man just, he was abusing the grace and the mercy and the kindness and the compassion of the king. The king showed him mercy. The king showed him kindness. The king showed him forgiveness. And he was supposed to go out of the presence of the king and displayed the same compassion, the same mercy, and the same forgiveness that he had received. But he refused to do it. So the king called this man that he had forgiven and said, 
you evil servant, you wicked servant. I forgave you that tremendous amount of debt because you pleaded with me. Verse 33, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? You should have went out and did the same thing. Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 35. Jesus said in verse 35, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and your sisters from their hearts. That unforgiveness is hindering you, friend. It's eating at you like a cancer. That bitterness, that animosity, that hatred, that hatred, that anger that has built up in you, it's eaten away at your spiritual life like a cancer. And you are wondering why your prayers can't be answered. You are wondering why you can't get a breakthrough. You are wondering why the turnaround is not coming in your life. The Holy Ghost is bringing all kinds of people to your memory right now. Kales, I'm gonna need you. I surrender. That, listen, listen friend, the Holy Ghost is talking to you. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. I said the Holy Ghost, I said the Holy Ghost is talking to you. He's got your undivided attention. What are you gonna do? You are at the crossroads. You got a decision to make. Are you going to say, God, forgive me for all of this bitterness, this hatred, this anger, that's built up in me. Are you going to repent tonight? Are you going to ask God to forgive you? Or are you going to be self-righteous and ignore what the Holy Ghost is pointing out in your life tonight? Are you going to just go on and just keep playing church like you've been doing? I don't care how much ties you pay, friend. I don't care how much you go to church. You can be to church on time. You can not miss another service. You can give in every tithe. You can give in every offering. But that unforgiveness is over you like a dark cow. It's eating away at you. How can you expect God to answer your prayer when you are full of hatred, you are full of anger, you are full of bitterness, your brother wronged you. So you're bitter towards him. Your sister wronged you. So you are angry at him. Maybe it was your father or mother who forsook you. Who gave you up for adoption. Who, who wanted to abort you. <clears throat> who sent you to live with your grandparents. Maybe it's a stepfather, a stepmother. Who hates you and they've hurt your feelings. Of course it's real. The pain is real. They've wounded you. But God is saying to you tonight, my friend, let them go. They are not worth it. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. You got a decision to make tonight. You are at the crossroads, my friend. What are you going to do? Listen. I've read a powerful story by this woman of God with a healing ministry. There was a woman in her, in her miracle service who was suffering from crippling arthritis. She had this arthritis condition for a long time. This was a wealthy woman. She was rich, 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 rich. She could have sold half the city if she wanted to. She was, I mean, she was rich. 
nothing wrong with being rich. But she was suffering from crippling arthritis. And she came to this miracle service, believing God for a miracle. She came to this service, believing God for a miracle. And she was in her wheelchair. And she came before this woman of God. This woman of God started to pray. And God interrupted her. God said, this woman who is suffering with this crippling arthritis, she has unforgiveness in her heart. So the woman who was the evangelist said, is there someone in your life that you need to forgive? Do you need to forgive someone? The woman looked at her like she could have cut holes in her. No, there's no one. I don't need to forgive anyone. And the evangelist began to pray, God, show me what to do. God spoke to the evangelist and said, this woman with crippling arthritis, her own brother, she has unforgiveness towards her brother who've hurt her a long time ago. She have not forgiven him. So the evangelist said to the woman, what about your brother? Do you have unforgiveness towards him? The woman with crippling outrider said, nope, I've X'd him out a whole long time ago. She said, what do you mean by you X him out? She said, I just cut him off. I don't talk to him anymore. She said, ma'am, God wants to heal your crippling outriders. But before he heals you, he's asking you to forgive your brother and release him. That woman sat in that wheelchair, her body twisted and contorted with that crippling arthritis. She sat and she wrestled. She wasn't sure she was willing to pay the price. And finally she decided, I'm going to forgive my brother. I'm going to let him go. And then this woman admitted to the evangelist. She said, my brother lived two doors away from me. And I had spoken to him in about, I think it was between 12 to 8. It, it really was 12 years. I think Tuesday night I accidentally said 18. But it was 12 years. She hadn't spoken to her brother in 12 years. And then the evangelist got wisdom from the Holy Ghost. She said, how long have you been suffering with arthritis? How long have you had this crippling arthritis and then it hit that woman like a bolt of thunder I've been suffer suffering with crippling arthritis for 12 years the very year that she opened herself up to unforgiveness towards her brother that was the same time crippling arthritis had come into her life Friends, unforgiveness and bitterness, it's one of the greatest hindrances to our prayer as children of God. It's one of the greatest hindrances to us receiving answers to our prayer. Listen, friends, the Holy Ghost is speaking here. The Holy Ghost is speaking here. Turn it up. The Holy Ghost is speaking here. I'll control it. The Holy Ghost is speaking here. I want you to forgive every person. God is bringing those people's faces before you right now. Their names, the Holy Spirit is bringing it to your memory. You might have been raped. You might have been molested. Something bad was done to you. And you, you have every right to hurt. You are a human being. But God is saying bitterness and unforgiveness it's not the way to go friend it's a hindrance to your breakthrough it's a hindrance to some of your finances it's a hindrance to some of you receiving healing from God he's asking you to forgive tonight he's asking you to forgive he's saying look I've forgiven you a debt that you couldn't pay 
you are on your way to a Christless hell. And the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus, he died for the ungodly. That's us. But the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Surrender to the Lord Jesus. Surrender that bitterness to him, that unforgiveness, that anger, that hatred. Come on, raise it. Hallelujah, I surrender all. I surrender all. Let it go. I surrender all. All. In thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Listen, some of you have been taking advantage of pastors and ministers, people in the body of Christ who are in authority. Some of you have been wounded by people in authority. They've hurt you real bad. But God is asking you to forgive them. God is asking you to let them go. Let them go. They have abused you. They've taken advantage of you. Your life is destroyed because of them. But the Holy Ghost is saying, forgive them tonight. Let them go. Wherever you may be right now listening to this message, I want you to make that kitchen table, that living room sofa, pull on the side of the road if you're in a car. I want you to get on your knees right now before God. I want you on your knees right now. There's a man watching this broadcast. Your alcoholism is due to your unforgiveness. That doesn't apply to everyone who's struggled on alcohol. But someone is in bondage to alcohol because of a hurt that a wife have done to you, that a brother have done, that a sister, a parent. And that unforgiveness, you just couldn't get rid of it. You try to drink it away, but it's not solving the problem. Oh, but you're going to be set free tonight. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all of our sins. The Bible says, if we have fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all sin. Friends, he's asking you to repent tonight. He is asking you to let those people go. You're about to get a financial breakthrough. You're about to receive a healing in your body. You're about to see a turnaround in your marriage. But husbands, forgive your wives. Wives, forgive your husbands. Children, forgive your parents. Parents, forgive your children. Employers, forgive your employees. Employees, forgive your employers. Forgive your family members. Forgive your church folks. Forgive your friends. Let them go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. I surrender. Oh, I feel a weight lifting. Come on. Ask for forgiveness. I surrender all. Oh, I.
Savior, I surrender. Oh, come on, surrender it. Surrender it to Jesus. Surrender that unforgiveness. Surrender that hatred. Surrender that bitterness. Surrender that animosity. Surrender that jealousy. Surrender it. Surrender it. Surrender it. Surrender it. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender. I surrender all. Come on, lift your hands up in a surrendered position. I surrender Savior. For some of you watching this broadcast, you've wronged some people. You've done some damage to some other people. And the Holy Ghost is telling me to ask you, give them a call and ask them to forgive you. Of course you are wrong. God said, give them a call. Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive him. Forgive him. Forgive him. Let him go. Let them go, friends. Let them go. Ask God to wash you in his blood right now. Ask him to wash you. Ask God to wash that bitterness, that unforgiveness. I see some people are weeping. Some people are weeping. Some people are crying. You're being set free. Some people feel a weight being lifted off their shoulder. Oh, I surrender all. I surrender all. All. Listen. That inheritance money is not worth going to hell over. Now I'm speaking directly to someone. They've robbed you over that inheritance money. There's several of you on here tonight. There's money been left behind, but it's been mishandled, it's been abused. And you were treated unfairly on what was left behind. But the Holy Ghost said he can give you so much more he can give you so much more than what your parents left behind. If you would just forgive them, you'll see the hand of God at work in your life in a way that you've never seen him at work in your life. Just write that person name down that you struggle with bitterness so bad against. Write their name on a piece of paper. Call their name and say, God, I forgive them. I forgive them. I remember in 1999, I was believing God to see signs, wonders, and miracles in my life. And in our ministry, I was believing God for the gifts of the Holy Ghost to work in my life, to bring healing and deliverance to the sick. While I was on that 40 day, 40 night fast, God gave me a list of people and almost 80 people that I needed to call those people and ask for their forgiveness. Man, some of them thought I'd lost my mind. But I obeyed God. Man, I was calling people left, right, and center. I was doing whatever it took to get in touch with people. I was calling people all over the place. People back in the Bahamas where I'm from. I was calling them and apologizing and asking for their forgiveness. Because it's the right thing to do. When you wrong people, you can't get away with that stuff. That, that thing will cost you to go to hell. Hell was not made for us, friends. It was made for the devil and his angels. But you got to beg someone's pardon. You got to ask someone to, to, to forgive you. You've got to ask somebody to forgive you. 
Are you listening to me, friend? Glory to God. Someone's life is being changed tonight. Someone's life is being changed tonight. Oh, I surrender all, all to Thee, my, my blessed Savior. Say this prayer after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive those. Call their names right now before God. I forgive those that have hurt me, that have wounded me, that have caused me this great loss, this great pain. I forgive them, Lord. I let them go. I place them on the altar of God tonight. Take that resentment out of my heart. Take that hostility. Take the, the raw emotions that, that burns in me when I think about what they did to me. That anger. Take it out of my heart, God. Take that darkness out of me. I repent, God. Forgive me. I let him go. God, forgive me for keeping unforgiveness in my heart. I see a woman sitting in a black wheelchair. You are receiving a miracle in your body. That arthritis, that paralysis cannot hold you. God sees you repenting. He sees you forgiving those people. Man, the life of God is coming into those paralyzed legs. I'm seeing this. Someone paralyzed sitting in a black wheelchair black and chrome wheelchair. I see the power of God going through, going through your paralyzed legs and bringing life back into it. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Be healed from paralysis in the name. Listen, friends, I want you to lay your hands on that part of your body where you need a miracle from God right now. You are forgiven. You are washed clean in the blood of Jesus. You are washed clean. Break every chain. You are washed clean. You are washed clean. You are washed. You are forgiven. Lift your hands to heaven and receive your forgiveness. God have forgiven you. You are forgiven. Katarababasha. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Receive that forgiveness. The chain of bitterness. It's broken. The chain of unforgiveness. It's broken. The prison bars of unforgiveness. It's broken. It's broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Say, Lord, I receive it. Say, Lord, I receive it. Listen, God's doing something. God's doing something. Listen, God's doing something. Some people, can you, who can say, Pastor, I feel better. I feel a cleansing taking place in my life. I feel the Holy Ghost washing me in the blood of Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost washing me in the blood of Jesus. Who can feel that weight being lifted off your shoulder? God for whatever you want him to do. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves 
and seek my face and pray and turn from their wickedness. Turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins. And I'll heal the land. Mighty God. 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 Yeah, yeah. I feel the victory sweeping into someone's life. I feel a breakthrough sweeping into somebody's life. I feel a breakthrough. I feel a supernatural turn around. Miracles. Miracles. Miracles are happening. Listen. Listen. I've got to read this. This was Agnes. This the rest of her testimony. Not only did God turn her family, her marriage around, her children around, but look at the miracle God did in her physical body. Listen. Listen to what Agnes wrote. Agnes said it was about four years ago. I fell and injured my back and my neck. I was washing the toilets, and as I came out, I just slipped. I slipped and banged my hand and my back. I hit my elbow on the floor. My L5 in the spine and my C2 in the neck was affected. Listen to this. The doctor I went to, and I saw the best doctors, they said, that if they do an operation on me, it will affect the rest of my spine because it was the last of the bones. The doctor said, we recommend painkillers for you just to relieve the pain. But if it affects your mobility, then we will pick the last option and do a surgery. Listen to this. As I was taking tablets, I prayed and I said, God, I can't be taking tablets or pills my whole life long. My liver is going to be affected. The rest of my body is going to be affected. Off and on the pain would come. When it would come, I would be taking medicine and I would sleep on the serogam or the massage bed that she used for therapy. Now, with God's presence and healing power the pain is totally gone I prayed along with you when you prayed for people to get healed when you said to put your hands on this part of your body my hands were up I felt the presence of God take away all the pain from out of my body I am fully recovered my healing happened two or three weeks ago there is no more pain now. I have full mobility. I can stand. I can walk for miles. When I got hurt, I couldn't do it at all. I was seeing a specialist. I couldn't walk around long distances. I couldn't sweep the house. I couldn't bend. I couldn't carry heavy things. It was really, really painful. I would just be popping the painkillers. And finally, the painkillers were not even taking effect. I surrendered myself to God. I just surrendered it to Him. I said, if it's your will, you will heal me if you want to. Because I know you want to heal me. Just heal me. I want to do your work from now on. There is no more pain now. My shoulder is completely normal. I can lift my hands. I can do everything. She can now bend and touch her toes with no pain. She can twist to the left and to the right. She can turn her neck around with no pain. She said, I can do anything. I can even sit a long time on the ground. So I've been talking about God to all my family members. My husband is just amazed. My kids who have seen me suffer, they're very happy for me. May God 
bless your ministry. Agnes from Klang, Malaysia. Somebody help me give God a praise. Somebody help me praise us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on that part of your body. Lay your hands on that part of your body where you need God to give you a miracle. I pray the power of God would flow through your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I pray that everything wrong in your body would get healed right now. I pray your diabetes would vanish. Your heart disease would vanish. Your clogged arteries would clear up. Your arthritis would disappear. Your migraine headaches, that brain tumor, that cancer in your body. I pray God would heal you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Receive that miracle in your body. Receive it, I feel the power of God. Receive that miracle in your body right now in the name of Jesus. Listen, receive that miracle in your body. I wanna give some of you a chance to become partners with us in the ministry or to sow a seed in the ministry. It takes money to run the ministry, amen? And we know what Jesus said, when you give, it's coming back to you, friends. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men give into your bosom. For with the same measure you meet, it will be measured to you again. Remember to visit us online or mail it in. Make your checks out to Sean Pinder Ministries, or you can visit us on our website at seanpinder.net. Click on the Give button. Sow a seed into our ministry. Amen. We are all about seeing souls saved and sick bodies healed by the power of God. And if you did not have a chance to write your testimony to us, visit us online and send us your healing testimony. But I can't go tonight. I surrender. I can't go tonight without giving somebody a chance to give someone who's not saved a chance to give their hearts to Jesus Christ. He loves you. Jesus said, I came to seek and save that which is lost. I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. I am a sinner. I am a backslider. I'm away from God. I'm on my way to Christ as hell. But Jesus, you died on Calvary Cross that I might receive forgiveness of sins. Wash me in your blood. Jesus, from this day, I accept you into my life as Lord and Savior. From this day, I will serve you and I will worship you and live for you until the day I die. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, your sins have been forgiven. I want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Come on, sing it, I surrender. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. 
listen, I can't just walk away from him without letting you guys know that December 6th, three days from now, that's Wednesday, me and my lovely, beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we will be celebrating 20 years of marriage. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Help me give God a praise for the best wife in the whole world. Come on, somebody. Help me give God a praise for the best wife in the whole world. There is, there is no woman on the planet like Pastor Amy Pender. I love that woman with all of my heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. I love my wife. We have a great relationship. We've been married for 20 years, and we're going to stay married for the rest of our lives. We made a commitment to each other and to God. We said, until death do us part. Amen? <laughs> I'm in love with my wife. So, thank all of you wonderful people for wishing us a happy anniversary. I love my wife with every atom of my being. I'm crazy over my wife. I'm crazy over her. Amen? We fell in love in Bible college, and it just keeps on getting sweeter as the day goes by. I'm more in love with her now than ever before. Amen? And she's given me seven of the most beautiful kids in the whole world. Amen? We have four girls and three boys. <laughs> I love my wife. And I don't care what's going on in your life. God can turn it around. Amen? And for you ladies who are praying for a good husband, I pray God send you a good Holy Ghost man. And for you ladies who have a husband, but he's not acting right, I pray the Holy Ghost bring him on his knees and that he beg you for your forgiveness and that he straighten up and fly right and serve God and do what God's called him to do. But yes, we are celebrating 20 years of marriage. We are madly in love with each other. Amen? I am the husband of one wife. She is the wife of one husband. Amen? And we're going to keep it like that until Jesus calls us home. The secret to a good who want who let me not, I don't mind I don't mind giving you just a little tiny piece of advice before I go. Who wants to know the secret to a good happy marriage? Who wants to know the secret to a good healthy happy marriage? You want to know it? The first thing is this: make sure Jesus Christ is at the center of your marriage. Make sure you love God with all your heart first. Because if you don't love God, and if you are not true to God, and if you are not committed to God, you are not going to be true to your wife. You are not going to be committed to your wife. You are not going to love her with all your heart. If you don't love God first, and honor His word above everything. Are you hearing me? That's number one. You got to love God first. And that love that God puts between you and your wife, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Would, are there going to be difficult days? Absolutely. But the love of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8, love never fails. My second point is this. I don't have any other best friend. My wife is my best friend. I am her best friend. It blows my mind when people say, oh no, these are the people over here, they are my best friends. Really? No wonder you have trouble in your marriage. I don't want no other best friends. My wife is my best friend. My wife is my partner. My wife is my right hand person. I love her with all my heart. She knows everything about me. I confide in my wife, amen? Are you hearing me? I'm in love with that beautiful woman. I'm crazy over her. And nobody is going to change that. Amen? The second thing, if you want a good marriage, is this. Keep other folks out of your marriage. 
And for you men who are letting your mama control your marriage, I got a word for you. Grow up. The Bible says, for this reason shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife. When you get married, your mom and dad does not come before that woman. Are you hearing me? And to you, wife, your mom and dad, brothers, sisters, they do not come before that husband. Are you listening to me? If you want a good marriage, your wife and your husband has to come first. Make your husband, make your wife your priority. Keep everybody else out of your business. Amen? <laughs> I just thought I'd tell you some good advice there. Keep your family out your marriage, man. Just do it. For this reason shall a man leave father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall become one flesh. And the Bible says, whoever God puts together, don't let nobody put asunder, bring division. I'm in love with my wife. Amen. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And we're celebrating 20 years of marriage on Wednesday, December 6th. God bless you guys. Love y'all. See y'all next week, Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Right here on our channel. We love you guys. God bless y'all now. Take care. Bye-bye.